The geopolitical landscape of the Baltic Sea region has undergone a seismic shift following Sweden's formal integration into the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. At the center of this transformation lies a specific piece of military engineering that has transitioned from a regional asset to the backbone of Eastern European mechanized infantry, the CV-90. As of January 2026, the demand for this Swedish-designed infantry fighting vehicle has reached unprecedented levels, with Poland and the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania prioritizing the platform over heavy American or German alternatives. This phenomenon is not merely a result of political alignment, but is deeply rooted in 30 years of iterative engineering and a unique philosophical approach to armored warfare that prioritizes the specific constraints of Northern Europe. The primary driver behind the current strategic shift is the uncompromising reality of Northern and Eastern European geography. Unlike the arid plains of the Middle East or the firm grasslands of Central Europe, the Baltic theater is defined by dense pine forests extensive marshlands and prolonged, brutal winters that turn the ground into a treacherous mix of mud and ice. Standard Western vehicles, often designed for the solid plains of Germany or the deserts of Iraq, frequently struggle with high ground pressure, making them susceptible to bogging down in the muddy road periods, known as the Rasputitsa. The CV-90, however, was engineered from its inception by BAE Systems Heglunds to navigate the snow-choked forests of Swedish Lapland. With a significantly lower ground pressure and a high power-to-weight ratio, the vehicle maintains mobility in terrains that would immobilize heavier counterparts like the American M1 Abrams or the German Leopard II tanks. A critical technical feature fueling this interest is the active suspension system originally adapted from Formula One racing technology. By adjusting the tension of the tracks in real time based on sensor data from the terrain ahead, the CV-90 can maintain higher speeds over rugged ground while providing a remarkably stable platform for its primary armament. For the Baltic armies, which operate on the principle of maneuver defense, striking quickly and disappearing into the dense forest, this mobility is a fundamental survival requirement rather than a secondary feature. The appetite for the CV-90 in Poland and the Baltics has been further sharpened by empirical data from recent regional conflicts, particularly the large-scale deployment of these vehicles in Ukraine. Throughout 2024 and 2025, the variants donated by Sweden became the most highly regarded infantry fighting vehicles in active theaters. Reports from Ukrainian operators emphasize the vehicle's superior crew protection and its ability to withstand modern battlefield threats. The modular armor system allowed vehicles to survive hits from anti-tank guided missiles and loitering munitions that would have been catastrophic for older Soviet-era equipment. This life-first philosophy resonates deeply with the Baltic states, where small populations mean that every trained soldier is an irreplaceable national asset. Furthermore, the integration of the Saab-designed Barracuda multispectral camouflage system proved decisive in real-world combat. By reducing the vehicle's thermal signature by over 70% and disrupting its radar profile, the CV-90 frequently remained invisible to enemy thermal optics during night operations. This technological edge has led Lithuania to specify these systems as a mandatory component for its recent order of 100 CV-90 Mark IV units, ensuring their fleet remains invisible to increasingly sophisticated adversary sensors. By early 2026, the formation of what analysts call the CV-90 User Club has created a powerful economic and logistical incentive for adoption. With Denmark, Estonia, Finland, the Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden, all operating various versions of the platform, the Baltic states found a ready-made ecosystem for logistics, training, and maintenance. In November 2025, a landmark technical agreement was signed between these nations to synchronize their supply chains. For a country like Estonia, 
This means they no longer need to maintain a massive, isolated stockpile of proprietary spare parts. Instead, they can rely on a shared parts pool distributed across the Nordic Baltic region. This interoperability significantly reduces the total cost of ownership over a 30-year life cycle, which is a vital consideration for nations spending between 3 and 4 percent of their gross domestic product on defense. The financial scale of these transactions is substantial. The recent Lithuanian acquisition of 100 units is valued at approximately 11 billion Swedish krona. Similarly, Poland's ongoing discussions regarding a potential joint venture to produce specialized CV-90 variants for its mechanized divisions could involve investments exceeding 25 billion Swedish krona over the next decade. The newest iteration, the CV-90 Mark IV, represents a leap toward digitalized warfare and software-defined combat. The Baltic states have expressed particular interest in its versatile D-series turret, which can be configured with various armaments ranging from 30mm autocannons to 120mm tank guns. This modularity allows the same chassis to serve as an infantry fighting vehicle, a mortar carrier, a command vehicle, or an anti-aircraft platform. This versatility is crucial for the Baltic states, which must maximize the utility of every hull they purchase to create a multi-layered defense. The Mark IV also integrates artificial intelligence and augmented reality battlefield management systems, allowing commanders to see through the armor of the vehicle via external cameras and helmet-mounted displays, a capability that is essential for maintaining situational awareness in the claustrophobic and high-stress environments of Baltic forests. The vehicle's electronic architecture is designed to be future-proof, allowing for the rapid integration of new sensors or electronic warfare suites as they become available. The surge in exports reflects a broader shift in Sweden's national identity and its role in European security. Long seen as a neutral mediator, Sweden has rapidly evolved into the primary technological arsenal for the eastern flank of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The manufacturing facilities in northern Sweden have moved to a 24-hour production cycle as of late 2025 to meet the backlog of orders, which currently stands at over 450 vehicles. However, this success brings logistical challenges that are being addressed through innovative industrial partnerships. Sweden has pioneered a co-production model that allows for technology transfer to purchasing nations. Poland, for instance, is currently negotiating the establishment of a domestic maintenance and assembly hub. This would allow Polish industry to produce components for their own fleet while serving as a secondary repair center for the entire Baltic region, thereby shortening supply lines during a potential conflict. This regional industrial base ensures that even if the primary factory in Sweden were compromised, the CV-90 fleet in the east would remain operational. Despite the widespread enthusiasm, the CV-90 is not without its objective challenges and points of contention. The primary hurdle remains the acquisition cost. At nearly 110 million Swedish krona per unit for a fully equipped Mark IV, the vehicle is one of the most expensive infantry fighting vehicles on the global market. Analysts have occasionally questioned whether a larger number of cheaper, wheeled armored vehicles would provide better value per hull for countries with limited budgets. Additionally, while the modular armor is world-class, it adds significant weight to the platform. The latest versions of the CV-90 approach 38 tons, pushing the limits of what some older rural bridges and secondary roads in the Baltic countryside can support. This has forced regional governments to initiate parallel infrastructure reinforcement programs, costing several hundred million Swedish krona to ensure their new mechanized brigades can move freely during a crisis.